Hey there guys, this is John Hang, and in today's video I wanted to do a quick update on my backyard. If you've been following along, I moved in December, and today it is July 15th. So it's been about eight months so far, and I wanted to show you guys around and show you what I've done so far. So here goes. Alright, so there have been a few big projects that we've done so far in this backyard, as well as a few that are upcoming. Um, let me first show you the biggest one that we did. So about two months ago we added this French drain. It's about a hundred feet long. It actually goes under the fence and continues. But um, we were having a lot of drainage problems and so I installed this French drain. It's about four inches in diameter which is about that much and it's about two feet deep and so when water flows here, surf when surface water flows through here it catches there and pretty much it just tries to direct it out and away from the house. You can see here that we have like a lot of dry slash wet spots and that's because the water has been pooling up but now we've actually got some growth. I know that this isn't grass obviously. Oh you can actually see a frog. That's how uh, wet it is back here that um, actual frogs are growing in here. But so yeah it seems that it's doing its job. It's pretty dry here. Uh, as you can see this French drain goes under the fence I've got a catch basin over here because this is the lowest part, so this is where the most water will actually collect. If I open this gate, um, you can see that I installed more gravel, catch basin there, um, and pretty much if you can imagine a drain, it's going down here, through there, and all the way out here, and it eventually leads out to this pop-up emitter, and then eventually to the stream. So this pop-up emitter, if there is enough water, in here it will pop up and water will slowly flow out of it. I was told by an environmental uh, supervisor that um, it's not a good idea to just have it flow directly into the stream because uh, that will cause erosion. So this is my attempt at uh, limiting that erosion, just having it slowly come out. And so this is what the behind of my garage looks like. Um, I want to eventually add pavers and then some sort of shed back here because I am getting really uh, space limited on the amount of tools I had have. I never thought that I would be someone that owns a wheelbarrow, but I've used it definitely more than five times. So I am now a person that uses a wheelbarrow. Behind my house, we've got this lush uh, forest of weeds. Uh, these weeds have actually grown in the last three weeks. Um, it's kind of crazy. I've also got a little bit of poison ivy. Well, it's actually now flourishing, so I've got to kill it again, sadly. But it would be great if I could like clear all this out, because I think a few feet of this is actually mine. It would be great if I could just grow like some uh, plants I don't care about. Like, it would be great to grow potatoes or something here. So one thing that I did with all the excess dirt from digging up this is that I actually moved it into the middle of the lawn. Um, I'll try to put a picture right here, but pretty much this area was sloped or dipped down at some spots uh, as much as six inches. So adding that dirt um, makes this a lot flatter and obviously I killed all of my grass, but in October I will replant it. I also did the same um, regrading over here, uh, except the grass here is already dead, so I actually didn't kill anything, I just made it a lot smoother. And there are definitely spots where I could uh, add some more dirt to make it more level, but that'll be another day, I think. We recently also just pressure washed the entire fence, so it went from this like really old looking gray to this pretty much looks brand new. It looks like we reinstalled a fence. I'll show a before and after right here. But yeah, I would say two days of pressure washing this entire fence has made a huge difference. We're actually going to, um, believe it or not, I think I want to stain this black. Um, I think that'll look really good and pretty modern. I think it'll look really good with some green plants. You see that we've got some green snake plants here. I have some plans to grow some more plants um, because they are actually building some houses back there. Sorry if you didn't hear me, but they're building some houses back there, and so I want a little bit more privacy. I know that I already have a six foot tall privacy fence, but um, the way that uh, everything is sloped, my backyard neighbors, when that house is built, they'll have complete access, uh, viewing access into my backyard. So that's why I want to add some taller plants. 
All right, and so probably the funnest part of my yard so far has been that I've added three planter beds. I'll walk through them. Sorry if I'm a little sweaty. It's like 85 degrees and kind of doing this in the sun. But um, let me walk over to this planter bed first. And so here is sort of my uh, herb and flower garden. Let me squat down. So here I've got some, I think these are zinnias. Zinnias, Celosia, uh, this is Thai basil. It's growing really well, actually. We actually just got it from the Asian grocery store and just, uh, you know, planted it in some dirt and then transplanted it here, and it's going really strong. Um, I've got some thyme right here. It smells really good. Um, and then some rosemary, some lavender. The lavender is not doing so well. Um, I'll have to figure out how to fix that. And some calamint. And I'm only remembering that name because I've got the label right here. On top, I've also got this arbor arch thing, and on it, I've connected these two flowers. Um, I don't remember what this one is, but this one is uh, verbena. So the point of this uh, flower garden is um, my fiance's grandmother passed away about two years ago, and since her passing, she's seen more butterflies, and so she equates butterflies to grandma being in her presence. And so I wanted to build this pollinator garden to possibly attract more butterflies. And so that's the hope. And as time goes on, I'll be adding more and more flowers. All right, um, so I'll just go over the rest of the garden pretty quickly. Um, I added this like little ledge thing to connect two of the planter boxes because it's sort of unused space. And the nice thing about it is I can just take these plants off and remove this ledge and I can get easy access to behind there. Um, just some regular mint, some lemon balm, um, lemon verbena and a lemon tree, a sapling lemon tree. And so these two right here are actually uh, mosquito deterrents. Um, you just kind of grab a leaf and then mush it up and apparently the mosquitoes don't like that and they'll uh, be deterred. But honestly, uh, the person at the uh, garden center, I feel like he was lying to me because I did that while I was working on the uh, garden one day and I still got like three mosquito bites. So maybe I just wasn't using enough. A little decorative butterfly here. Uh, these are marigolds. So marigolds are really cool because they kind of like bloom throughout the entire summer. And you just sort of uh, cut them off. Like this one could probably use some deadheading. So I just cut this off. And if I wanted to, um, I could actually take the seeds out, dry them, and replant them uh, for another season. All right, so here I've got some tomato. Uh, this one I grew from seed. Here's another tomato. I picked this up from Lowe's because I did have a tomato right here that I grew from seed, but I think a bird stepped on it or something, so it died. So I just replaced it with like a really cheap $1 tomato tree or tomato plant from Lowe's, and it's growing pretty well. Here I've got some basil. I actually um, just cooked pizza the other day, and I just picked some of this basil out of my garden and threw it in the pizza, and it was really good. Here I've got two tomatoes also, they're not doing very well. I'm not sure why. And if you see this hole right here, that hole keeps coming back. And so that makes, oh, wait, there's a bigger hole now. I don't think that, well, I just covered it up. But pretty much, I think that there's a wolf spider living in this hole. And so wolf spiders actually go out and hunt. They don't make webs. And so I think that's what it is because I have seen something crawl out of there before. Anyways, moving on, uh, Carolina Reaper, bought this from Lowe's, Jalapeno, started this from Seed. These are also jalapenos, but they're not growing very well. So this is a red hot chili pepper, they'll probably start turning red in a little bit. And then over here are carrots. So between my planter beds, I've got an elephant ear, and so this is what I'm planning to put along the fence to add some privacy. Hopefully it grows to 10 feet like the label said, but um, part of me doubts that. But I still think that it's a beautiful plant, and I really love how uh, big the leaves are. Over here, I've got some ginger that I'm hoping to grow. At this point, I kind of just grow stuff that I feel like is cool. Um, here's lemongrass that probably needs to be repotted. If I back up a little bit, here is a uh, trellis that I actually made myself using just some furling strips that I found at Lowe's. They were really cheap, like a dollar each. And then I just used some uh, I think either nylon on or cotton string. If I walk up to it, uh, you can see how I made it. 
pretty much I just use these uh, hooks and pretty much just cut like little dents, divots in the wood to keep them in place. And I pretty much did that just diagonally and horizontally. And so this planter bed isn't filled out yet because um, we're kind of in the middle or end of a growing season. So I'm kind of waiting until August to start my next batch of stuff, but I kind of couldn't wait. Um, so I just bought this cucumber from Lowe's and over there is a zucchini. Um, over here is uh, like bell peppers and over here is another tomato. Um, this tomato honestly isn't doing that well, so I don't have high hopes for it. And then lastly is a purple haze. Um, this purple haze is really awesome and you can actually see like a bee. There's a bee back over there if it'll focus, but he's just chilling out. Let me see if I can go around. There it is. So it looks like this bee is literally just sleeping on this flower or something. But it's really cool seeing stuff like this in my garden in my backyard. Um, and that's kind of the point of putting these flowers here is to attract pollinators like this. So I'm really happy about stuff like this. All right, so uh, I guess one last thing about this garden is I've also got an irrigation system. It comes from a hose bib uh, that I've routed. You can see the green hose from here. It routes all the way from the hose bib over there and pretty much it just comes in, sprays everything, and it does go to these two side beds, but not that well. Um, I'm working on fixing the water pressure in my house. Um, and so a lot of water shows up here, but not so much over here. So on the side of my deck, I've got some stairs over here. I decided to also add this like uh, potting station from some leftover lumber that I had. It's pretty thin. It's only uh, 10 inches wide, but that's definitely enough to like, you know, put some stuff here and just like repot some plants. Um, down here I've got some extra uh, soil. I've got my extra pots here from all the plants I've bought. And so this is just a nice way to do stuff without like squatting down or uh, breaking my back. On my deck I've got a grill cart and underneath my grill cart I've got some saplings that I'm growing outdoors. So this is bitter melon and I've got uh, five of those saplings. Um, so I've also got some, I think this is called a phylodendron. This is just an indoor house plant um, that I'm propagating. And over here, I've got Maxi. And so that's my backyard tour. This is what it's looking like from afar. I've also got that fire pit. It came with the house. And you can see kind of how ugly my backyard looks right now, but it looked a lot different in a few months. And yeah. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. Um, obviously, I'm probably doing some stuff uh, gardening wise wrong, but I mean, it was either start my garden now in the middle of the season or wait until next year. And I figured that it was more important for me to make the mistakes now than to have all that happen next year um, because that'll just mean I've wasted a year doing this or wasted a year doing nothing. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, have some upcoming projects for this backyard in the fall but until then I've got some indoor projects for the summer um, yeah if you like this video consider subscribing leaving a comment if you have any questions or want to give me advice on how to garden a little better and if you like the video definitely consider liking it until next time this is John Hing peace